What's up? Welcome back to my channel. And if this is the first video you've ever clicked on, I'm Diana. I'm the creator of Money Boss Mama, and I love to teach women how to save money, pay off debt, shift their money mindsets, as well as stick to a budget. And also, if you are new here, I recently hit my emergency fund goal. So I did wind up getting the total to $10,400, and I reached that goal in March. So actually, it's April 1st today. So last month, I hit the goal and I was able to save $8,000 in three months. So I decided to sit down and share with you all exactly how I was able to do it. And I will have a quick disclaimer. It's going to be super simple. It's going to be like, you're probably going to be like, that was it. That that was how you saved it and I do want to also say that you know my personal situation is going to be different than yours you may not be in the position to save eight thousand dollars in three months totally fine but this is just to give you guys some ideas on how you can go about your savings goals first thing that I did which is always the first thing that I do whenever I am on this new venture was to set a specific goal Goals are literally everything when it comes to your finances because you are gonna use your goal to create your action plan. And if you literally don't know where you want to go, you don't know your destination, you're not gonna be able to create a plan to get there and you're gonna be super overwhelmed and frustrated and just automatically assume that you can't do it. And you wanna make sure that your goal is super specific and relevant to your current financial situation. If it's not relevant, it's not gonna make the most sense and it's not really going to motivate you to continue working towards it because we all know whenever we set goals especially when it comes to our finances it's really really hard to stick with it we get it super excited in the beginning but as the days roll on we kind of like fall off the bandwagon and we're just like screw it you know i'll do it at another time and i typically always use the smart goal method whenever i am creating my goals which is to be one specific the who what when where why how whatever and then m is for measurable you want to have the specific amount you're trying to attain and i will explain this in my second tip why this is so important a is attainable we want to make sure it's realistic don't say anything that's not aligning with your current financial situation r is relevant make sure it's something that you need to be doing right now it makes the most sense for you in your current financial situation and t is time bound which is huge because if we just come up with like a random day saying we're going to start monday or you know next week we're just going to continue to push out the start date and i do this as well but once i have a specific date in mind that i know my goals have to be hit by it kicks me into high gear because i know that i only have like two three months to get this done or however long and so it motivates you to continue to get well to get started and then continue going on so for my emergency fund, my targeted end date was June 30th of 2021. Obviously I hit it um, about three months before that date and I am gonna break down in this video how I was actually able to do that. But I knew by June 30th, I needed to have the goal completed. The second thing that I did was I created a budget that revolved around my main goal. I am a huge advocate for goal-based budgets. That's because it helps to narrow your focus because you're only focusing on one or two things. And so it maximizes the money that you already have because you're going to put most of your extra money that you come across within your budget towards that one specific goal. So not only is it maximizing your income, but it's also helping you to feel like you're making a lot more progress because you're not putting your money to 10 million different things that you're trying to achieve at once. That's super overwhelming and that's what I find a lot of people do whenever they come to me for help. So by doing this, I was able to go into my budget and rework my numbers around how much I could actually apply to my emergency fund, which came out to be $320. So $640 a month that's just using my day job, my pay for my day job. And so that is the amount that I would send over to my emergency fund from each pay 
paycheck. And whenever you go in and you rework your numbers, it's gonna force you to really evaluate the expenses that you have in your spending plan, which is your budget. So for me, I knew that I had to send $320 per paycheck. So that forced me to go look at the non-essentials and shave off what I could from each non-essential in order to actually be able to afford to send that 320 to my emergency fund every time I got paid. And when you have a comprehensive spending plan, it makes it super, super easy because everything that you're paying for regularly is listed out in front of you. So you can easily identify which expenses are not really valuable to you and which ones you can lower in order to hit your goal. The third thing that I did was stay consistent and I know you're probably like, okay, well, yeah, duh, no brainer. But those of you watching know, it's super hard to stay consistent, especially when something is new. And this is something that I struggled with in the beginning of my financial journey. Like I would do good, then I would fall off because I did not have enough discipline to stay consistent. Now, mind you, I have completed my debt-free journey, so I have four years worth of discipline when it comes to my financial goals. But literally, the thing that has kept me consistent even after I've paid off all of my debt was the fact that I make sure that my vision and my goal are super strong. So I use my vision to create my goal and then from there I create my action plan. And when you have all of these three things working together, it, it's, it's not gonna be super easy. It's still gonna feel a little uncomfortable in the beginning, but it's still gonna motivate you enough to continue going forward and doing what you need to do to hit your goal. And now y'all, when it comes to whatever you put in your budget, you have to detail out how are you gonna stick to those amounts? And that's gonna be your action plan. So if you say that you are only able to uh, spend $50 a paycheck when it comes to personal funds, you need to have a plan as to how you're gonna to stick to that $50. If in your budget you've calculated that in order to hit your goal, you have to reduce your grocery budget to $200 a month, you need to have a plan as to how you are going to stick to that $200 a month grocery budget. Everything needs to have a plan. Whatever you say you're going to do, you need to plan it out. And that way you are building up the discipline that you need to get to your goal because you know the steps that you need to take. And even when you're, you're lacking motivation and you're lacking confidence, if you stick to the plan, you're going to be walking towards your goal and then you are kind of like unconsciously building that discipline and then when you stick to it stick to the plan that you created based on your vision and your goal then you're going to get the results the fourth thing that i did which is my number one strategy when it comes to my financial journey and if you are not new here you probably can guess what i'm about to say it is me maximizing any and all extra money that I get. So I did get three sources of extra money from January to March, and I will break down how much I actually put in my emergency fund from each source. So source number one was my tax refund. For years, I've used my tax refund to help me with my financial goals, and it really helped me to get out of debt as well. I sent over $2,000 for my tax refund to my emergency fund, and then I get an incentive from my day job in March, I believe it was March. And so I sent over $2,000 from my incentive as well to my emergency fund. And then we got the stimulus check. So that really put my goal on turbo. I sent over $1,400 from my stimulus check to my emergency fund also. So all together, I sent over $5,400 and extra money to my emergency fund to help knock that out. So as you can see, a big bulk of the 8,000 did come from 
practicing delayed gratification and really maximizing the extra money that was coming to me. So when extra money, you know, hits your hands, you really got to ask yourself, what can I do to put my future self in a winning position? A lot of times when we get extra money, we see it as, you know, our time to shine. We deserve it. We deserve all of these things. And yes, you do deserve to spend a little extra on yourself, but you've really got to take this time and maximize it because especially if you're low income and you don't have a lot of money to apply to your goals because this is a strategy this is a way for you to level up and you want to make sure that you are making decisions based on the bigger picture okay y'all i'm not quite sure what happened to the last few clips of my video but anyway if you clicked on this video thinking that i made a butt ton of money you're wrong i just know how to create a strategy based on whatever i have available to me and hopefully this was super helpful for you all who are trying to save money but if you are working on a financial goal leave your financial goal down in the comments below and how you are going about reaching it and until the next time i will catch you all in the next video